Okay, hello everybody and uh, welcome to the St Andrew's Night um, o Come O Ye. Um, hello, Akarjan, I guess Fatcha Arath, um, Gu Come O Ye. I thought I'd do a wee bit for our Gaelic friends who are, who are in the West there. We've got a grand nacht uh, Scots for you tonight. Uh, we've got um, Scots speakers for Shetland. Ah, the way doing to, to, to Galloway. Um, so you'll hear a, a good range of Scots tonight. And we've even uh, got our guest, Scots learner for Israel, so he can get the crown for to be in the farthest afield. And certainly a lot better weather than we have a night. Uh, um, so we're just going to, to work around. Um, um, and uh, get everybody to, to do their, their wee bit. Um, and uh, we'll also speak a wee bit about um, our vice um, as, we, as we go through and fit our vice as, as are about. Um, we've been busy in, in uh, the our vice towers um, of late. Um, it was AGM season. Um, so we've been quite quiet uh, to, to the members, but uh, well, now we emails, I've had plenty of emails about the AGM, but um, as far as our events go, we've been a bit quieter from we've been electing a new committee, which is our new in place, and we'll be in touch. We are to let you all can for the new committee members are. And um, and then next year is certainly going to be a gay busy year for us. Um, we've seen a lot of positive things in 2021. Um, We've uh, the Scots Pledge, and so we're quite a few members of Parliament um, talk a Scotch Scots Pledge, which was a great success for us. Um, so we'll be looking to, to talk at the next step further. So enough about me wittering on, um, the gape with the big sticky up hair. Um, I didn't uh, really think about when I was booking my hair appointment for the morn that it was the day after this event. So I can just about get my hair in. So that's uh, that's the main thing. So um, and we've got Iona there as well. Um, hello, Iona. I did have you first on the list, but you're maybe wanting to wait until we get going a wee bit, and I'll I'll give you a shout in a wee a wee minute. That's fine. Um, so looking at my list here, um, we're going to. Stop at start at the top of the country. Um, not your doing first. So you, if I can pass over to you. Thanks very very much, Phil, and uh, a good evening for Shetland to everybody to everybody. Um, I got two three pretty poems, and the first thing is actually about a very set time in the morning. Um, it's a piece that I'm written. I'm in the past month. And it's called the herst, which is the harvest of the, the autumn time. In this pretty poem, I'm talking about a few things, like I'm talking about the systemus, and the systemus being a pretty bird, being a, uh, um, it's a Jenny Ren, uh, and this is the Shetland name for it. I'm also talking about, um, I'm talking about the a, a bright Kalishang. Okay, and a Kalishang is a very boisterous noise. So, and speculation, which I'm really loving as a word. So here comes, here comes Herst. See the Maril, new delight live with, we all along, with a murkin creeping early, the last of the simmer gone to rust, a twin the night and the morning, a meadow pipit in a gerse, Henting the morsels like a thief, afar the neck scale, hellery. And in the ends of October, war the clouds hang to TV mass. The dark blue light of the morning is yet to live with for the sun. Where Hearst reminds us of Gansies. The need to wipe it were winners. Here the system is it stains the inner dikes of our of rain world. Bright Kalishang, speculation behind the glass, just for eight as stars gather on wires, telegraph codes in languages with herst 
regards and understands. And then the second period piece of the Martha in the Night was written at the time that I was writing for the for the centenary of George Mackay Broom. And, and there was a piece that appeared in a wonderful anthology um, through the uh, through my federations of writers Scotland. Um, and, and this piece, Peer Head, actually was not offered for the anthology, but I love it equally because I was thinking with strongness in my mind and the Peer Head, and also the Peer Heads we hear here in Shetland. So it's a pretty mix of the two. It goes like young Peer Head, each stain chiseled to perfection. So many footsteps tracked and washed. So many fingers, handheld ropes, e echoing voices, rune stains from a fisher, gutter, cooper, merchant, or simple mariner, him a highland barn or visitor. Each pier, stone, pathway to the sea, in tidal beauty, moody swell, no bollard specks for untied ropes, yet welcomes all. Tis the kingdom to the whole world where water embraces the living, where barnacles cling to all stains amid Merrill and bobbing kelp, where we come to sit in summer, fish of our dusk, hoist with spirits to well kind cells, faces, and ah. Watch the sun rise, dawn after dawn, where every dream tattooed on stains. And um, I'd like to finish with a pretty poem. I, I love nature and, and Shetland were, were blessed with the nature and, and you're such an inspiration. Um, so I'd like to finish off with a pretty, pretty poem called Golden Plovers. I love these pretty birds. I see them coming in, 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 in the spring in a var and then they appear very, very golden looking and then they put on their special you know bridal suits and they become absolute glitter and you hear them peep 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 and call and whistle and uh, and this is how it feels like when you hear them when you discover them when you're about you know just walking about golden plovers first hear their call telegraphic on a saturday afternoon October belongs to glitter. Delicate bills, elegant wings at Dalsetter, where Wilson warms shiny mantles after sewers, dunpours, often diagonal, a clint like kiss. In their quest sooth, they chose to land onto short grass, regroup and feed mechanical, hide a hindelaric star sedge, blotches of gold from crown to tail, always looking out for danger. Their shadows stretch by the ooer in oblique light, a sharp wind chisels into shafts, deem to please their will to survive ahead of their aerial trek between islands, headlands, and coast, a sea crossing impossible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nat, that was lovely. And you can just, you can shut your in and just be teen right up to, to the islands. And I'd say thing I can imagine is just the inspiration um, you would get for, for the, the land Runa, Runa Butcher, um, up there must be immense. It's the same like with the spoken word. Yeah, you see it now, and like the, the artists that um, were up up your way, and I just um, 
a magical place and I have to say in their place I've been yet but it's definitely it's got to come up it's got to come up let me kind this was I oh I I I'll definitely um definitely mm -hmm. it's top of the top of the list um so I uh, thank you very much and that it's much appreciated as ever um so for Shetland we're going to jump doing to Mayor my own pair to the world um, and Mark you are in Macduff-ish kind of are you in the tune itself? Oh, I am in the Macduff aye for sure aye. just don't need a hill aye aye um, so you just want to crack on aye aye if you could just aye do your, do your wee bit that would be just great thank you well, if, I, if, if I have a roar long just let us get in and I'll stop okay oh I'll just mute you Mark it's fine <laughs> 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 no, no. Right, well, um, I was wondering, fit why there were a, a, a fair amount of wee crafties, uh, wee long, steen roads and numbers at the Einanen up on Overbray, which is in the middle of Troop. Now, it fair got scalped on Friday night, and my thoughts and prayers going out to all the folk out there that didn't have power or water, uh, and my thanks going out also to the folk, uh, the good neighbours and communities that have been helping each other across King Edward and Crudy, in fact, across the Haley Aberdeen chair, because there's a lot of folk going through an awfully hard time indeed. Now, um, a farmer told me that in the Highland clearances, the Duke of Fife gave 12 acres each of the Rock Grun at Overbury to each dispossessed family. So in every Lord or Laird was as bad back then, and explains the button bends, the crafts, and quite a few that are nothing mere than Rummels of Steen new up in Overbury. And I didn't care if they paid rent um, on the ground that was superior, and, and, but it would have taken an awfully hard graft to till it and work, which takes me on to Geordie's Craft by James S. Wood. McCraxy had been Geordie's Craft since Gweed Cain's fan. He'd driven it for the hill with ne a soul to give him a hand. A pick and a spad his only tools, muckle steams, heather and routh o' bracken. Neen but the Lord would ever ken who hard and land this peer man vrocht to clean and till his land. Three acres of it and sign with his ain hands, a simple hoosey bigot with the very steens he'd rug it for the grun. And there, ah, by himself, a coo for by, he dwelt, nor envied any man. Spring water at his door and sunrise on the hill made friends with all the living craters run about. And there he met he lived, content for all his days. But come the time when legal aid was declared, the hill and all the land, including Geordie's grun, belonged to some rapacious laird. And Geordie's new Adeen, Adeen Alman, had rent to pay. That hit him hard. They noticed teen, who oh, are ah, the work he'd done. In a day when he was wearing on, and like today, the minister clum up to see him. And he spoke about the life to come and spear at him. What Geordie would you like in heaven above? Aye, just book Raxi at a reasonable rent, he spoke no more. Just in his ain soul took flecht. And now he has, with this I'm certain sure, a crafty till I sell, rent free for our eternity. Well, that's a first thing for sure. And um, if I'm allowed, I'll maybe do another thing. Um, I, I quite like this scene. Um, uh, yeah, uh, man, Peter Buchan and, and Peter there uh, is a great uh, fan of Peter Buchan, as I am as well. Uh, and and uh, his, uh, I, I think his, his words in the Scots and in Doric uh, rival the best of the bards. Um, and uh, I've, I've just discovered a few books of his and, and I've been going through quite a lot of his stuff and, and I really do like it. Um, so hopefully, this is one of my famous, the, the, the favourite things. Um, now, I've quite a few good friends and a fair number of acquaintances, and I quant will do for, for, for them for sure. Um, now, I've been on about Peter Buchan, and this is the win in his face. Some folk get the win in their face. Ah, their mortal days. Find if they can the desert place which dreech and craggy braes. Theirs is the world of trachlan trow, theirs is a dour grey sky. For the sunny spell and the gentle jow seem I to pass them by. Some folk get the wind at their backs, theirs is a lichtsome burn. We never a flaw in the fine spun flax they draw for the burling pern. 
Theirs is a world of fill and fess ben. Theirs is a brecht blue sky. For the Karl Roch Schuer that weets their men seems I to leave them dry. Some can smile in their weary lot, although the fecht be sair. Some he eye the greet in their throat, though they're never cark their care. Keep ye the chill for the sheltered place, whose heart is Karl esteem. I'll take the lad with a win in his face, and I'll hear a better friend. So I quite like that in. It's, it's a real good in. And I'll end with this in because I think it's got a real good message at this time of year. Um, and uh, it's a shout out as well to Andre, um, uh, who are long standing secretary, uh, by Lillian Grant Rich. If I was born in Glenlivet, then we can that Andre is partial to Glenlivet, and she was born in 1909. Now, and I love this poem, especially if there are things we've all been going through this last couple of years, I think it's a really good message. Um, and it's got a Christmas prayer. I'm just a humble tractor man, I can a food to pray. But after far to thinking, flew in, flew in out here on the bray, with the gulls are flocking ruin me, like money, marble dues. I've been counting o'er my blessings, their files may are more than I can use. I look up to the left I've been, and you're near me, Lord. And maybe you'll forgive me if I try to say a word. It wouldn't be the why they pray in cucks I or a land, but somehow in your wisdom, Lord, I can you'll understand. It's coming on to Christmas, I hear beef and neeps and bros, but there's plenty of them that win a hay and muckle. Take pity, Lord, on those. Let nae living thing be hungry, let nae living thing be call, be it bird or beast or bairn or the helpless or the owl. Gee soft warm beds to them that's ill or near their journey's ain. I often think about them as I lay snug. In mine, let nae drunken dad or mither thrash or kick their bruise their bairn. Spread your heavenly wings about them. Dinna let them come to him. The few bit words I'm saying, you can hardly call prayer. I just ask as good as I have got for mankind everywhere. So that out o'er the world, when the stars are glint and brecht, there'll be peace and joy and plenty on this blessed Christmas night. Well, that's me. And... I'd love to hear other rest of you. <laughs> that was great work. And did you see that last scene? The person was Faye Glenlivet. Did you? Something. Oh, I, I should say oh, Glenlivet yeah. for sure. And uh, um, I got a lot of my books for my mother-in-law Isabel, and she'll be watching here tonight. Then she'll be uh, giving me some positive feedback in my Doric as well, Auntie Mary. Oh. Uh, and uh, you know they'll, they'll be adding their stuff there, I'm sure. So hi, hi, is mother-in-law, and if it like. Hi, hi, hi Isabel, for you, dear. <laughs> I, I was brought up in Glenlivet. Um, well, Riney first, and then my father uh, moved firms up to, to Glenlivet. But uh, right. it's Brook Laddie, I'm um, drinking a night. So, um, better not tell my friends. <laughs> um, I'm on a West Coast. Tell, honestly. <laughs> that was great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mark, for, for that. Um, so, well, we're heading back up to, to Bonnie Shetland again. and. Chris, it's your, your cell that we've got next. Okay, thank you. Angels play croquet. Angels play croquet. Top hats are chimneys. Troch so rain, whiskey. Scarecrows splash chutney. Pies cut by plumen. Cakes freeze to snowmen. Weddings with goblins. Tangle. In bobbins. Beer barrels are bootleg. Wizards' eyes drip eggs. Diaries rip to dregs. Mirror a witch nags. Ponds are like portraits. Sna is peril gauntlets. Fountains of sherbet. Real hares and rabbits. Right in quill barrows, our trench marrows. Secrets for the taro, whispered in furrows. Calendars, tack bows, the clocks are for load. We varnished meadows, splintering burrows. Jack rigs in pillows, antlers so willow. Candles are halos, shades share their shadows. And Diablo and the Corso rumple stilt skin. He was offered the job by a wolf in sheep's skin. 
It was a ragged swab that sorcerers spin. He travelled in a cart, rummelled rods like yogurt, our rigs so apple tarts and hoof tricket dirt. The cart was hijacked, so the wreck transport gave the tracks a knock for trails or clatched clart. It was to teach language for damaged old books, my carried baggage dragged for the nooks. A bon horse and carriage were voodoo taxis, a robber's head of rummage, buttons were currency. Arrivals at a fridge, his fox said good riddance, where ogres burnt their bridge, and their in rolled in a glance. Slesters o' a smudge, a tune in wickets, fork rub a grudge, stacks o' oiled buckets. Credits and debits dance, biggins o' skittles, trows in a trance, winds made wid wiggle. So the ill look at job, like a poisoned apple, a door we nae knob at the tour o' Babel. A possessed mob, a chest by the coppers, a kettle jigged on a hob, and they ran through a mirror. Shan the ribs o' the village's girdle, a tune at the tub, piggy at the middle. Apples were duked with their skulls in trickle, lost boots were hooked, the beaches were brittle. So, the words he taught covered up the crimes, numbers and knots, naughty nursery rhymes. Pickled chamber pots, lemon and lime, coins swallowed in slots, thirteen o'clock chimes. The tune o' tiddly winks, a miss o' marbles, flashbacks o' blinks, horned and horrible. The jester job, the prince and the pauper, curt kisses in pubs, Stone cups and saucers. The devil's dialect in shoot black ruins that the grass picked and words shuffled by spoons. O the tour o' Babel quar every lair that leads to trouble like a slippery stair. Forests o' stubble, Medusa's tales, fort speech bubbles and fonts that failed. Swallowed is gobbles, no wine could bill, gridlack. In rubble, the doors were nailed. The city is crumbled, the tune was a pear, fruits twisted tumble with sugar in squares. The kert was ramshackle and shoved o'er the slime, rods bunion buckled and paths plitted in grime. A treat bare red carpet, nay lum reek welcome, netting was a fret foo a man's tantrums. Like figures out lad for the nursery rhymes, they each had to claw and hay a steep climb. Quar the sheep were cad, dogs chorused by hymns, and the winds that blad makin the girl's mine. There was no rewards while he served his time, he was crooned a coward by the garden gnomes. Hell hooses haggled, ruins grew mushrooms, biggins bedraggled, we trees of stumped combs. A rock chasm chiselled by a blunt bed, warning cockles and mussels for flower poster beds. The Old Testament, o poker carts, was hangovers and grunts for a giant's beard. The New Testament, for scam junk mail, a book full of rants, lick, gurning gills. My pockets were drained like burst waterworks, the bank was sustained, monopolies dug barked. The carts, Ripped reins with wheels that sparked, that licked the lanes, and holes plugged by corks. Thank you. That was lovely, Chris. Thank you very much. Welcome. You should, um, you should get into we uh, an illustrator for for Ati. Um, so I was just picturing all the all the ghouls and things as you were were speaking there. That would be a, a great thing to 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 see some drawings to you now. So. Just in case you're not talking about it. Yes, <laughs> and that's me though, because I can't draw to save my life. Oh, uh, yes. Or sing. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Um, so we're jumping over to Israel now. Um, so we've got Neil, who's a, a Scots learner, um, and he's written um, a, a lovely poem in Echt and, and Scots. And I think this is a, a great example that. You don't just have to be a, a native 
Scots speaker to speak Scots. You can you can learn it and talk Perth and things. We are us native lot and arm we're a gay welcoming bunch and it's it's just brilliant to to see somebody with enthusiasm for for um our, our lead and um, so i'll put my wish and uh, pass over to your shell neil and uh, uh hello abode uh good night happy saint andres day uh his grandma a hula uh, I is la nuv antra sona uh, duiv. Duiva. Uh, 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 Papaliv. Um, Say, I scrive a poem. Um, I was thinking about uh, the name of this organization, Ur Vice. And uh, recently I read a wee bit and then to, uh, uh, the English artist, uh, Lewis Wayne. Uh, do you can Lewis Wayne at all? It was uh, he drew cats. It was famous for drawing um, illustrations of cats, caricatures, uh, folk, but as cats, as anthropomorphized cats. Um, um, he was uh, married at twenty at uh, twenty three to uh, his sister's uh, governess. Governess was uh, ten years. Uh, older, nor him, um, and uh, he, over his life, he was uh, uh, cheated out of money, uh, he was a uh, muckle, he was very unsuccessful, but uh, he couldn't use his money wisely. Um, uh, eventually, he was uh, hospitalized for uh, some kind of um, some kind of mental illness. We didn't can uh, folk in. Um, some folk say it was schizophrenia. They look at his uh, his uh, pictures while um, uh, while uh, for one he was uh, in the hospital, and they say, look, it it uh, becomes it becomes more and more abstract. Uh, the longer his uh, illness progressed. But um, we didn't ken uh, the, the true order of the pictures, and we didn't ken folk came first or later. Um, other folk think he was autistic, like myself. Uh, say, when I read about that, I started thinking a cat lover like himself, who was thought to be autistic, I saw Muckle and myself in him, or at least in the story uh, on Wikipedia. So uh, I scrive it uh, a poem, half about him, mostly about him, but half about myself, uh, as my experience as a Wayne, um, an autistic Wayne, and a queer Wayne, uh, before I count it myself. Um, so here it goes. In the year 39, on the fourth day of July, Elway, near an 80, was finally, truly, the pert and gone, the old bamp that was damned to be buckle mare nor a pawn. For Miss Richardson E., what was after a groom, he was a bro lad, she could easily groom, with a talent to paint what would sell, she could tell, afore she departed to herself. Folk aft thought, Don Wayne couldn't be on his cellar, and soon found their ways to swig his behooved cellar, say long this get on, Say Puckle he had, they folk round him still were a pucklin as gleg as a con. So if one had come crashing and he become mental, well, he was a wad to the loony been sent, though the doctors would cry, but my knowledge said firm, the queer carol, my theories you'll confirm. But what did he do with the vice of his ain, with poor brilliant dafty Don Wayne? He was trailing's busy, as busy could be, as his head and his pocket both dwined. And ye would not have to look closely to see that his wee pals he would always mind. Sin as Emily fanned her sweet source the fresh air in the form of dear heaven St. Peter, what came there to evidently comfort their air her illness at last did defeat her. Cats gave him his heart, he gave them his heart. Through charity groups, they're not just answered twice. All for their sake, with sick passion he spake, 
on behalf of his pals with no face. Through his wee pals, he kicked a folk. He could show us sad stories or jokes. He'd capture the folk with his nature game on and his cats, whom he could understand. When he was ten out of our world, for doctors to give care and then him to scribe, his dignity and his well being to rave, or just to find proof for something they believe, they Leafians and all, there they were. With their image, say soft hewn on textures refined, they gave him his voice back to mind, come days along sign, new say hein, to mind ends again when he was cried, Wayne. The story does lay for me in South Wales, when I think about it, a blood hoffling biles. Say I'm on come down, I'm on think, or who the accusations are thin. I didn't care muckle about with Elwain's wife or other folk around him, if truth be lying there. I did can't he can't muckle jai te in life, and I, there were folk what did care. There were folk what did see the good in his cell and held him in awe, said his works or say bra. Some folk for his sake did cry out and did wail, some doctors did want to turn brack into hell, and some folk, they loved him and all. I can I'm committing to this poem as a vice. I broke it inside of his tail for my vice. A cause when I think of El Wayne, I can see, repeated in smear a familiar scene. Me, a Wayne with a vice, fun sick rockle and clear, and in mere wise nor in guy and queer. Many years come and gay, but the fact stays the same. What heather and vice or her name are fair game. Say for him, I would greet, but I mind, his tale is nay mine's. And gin, and gin where to alike, not to feel in my bones that his story is just like my own. I'm on it to mind that he was not alone. There were folk what did love Don Wayne. Thanks. That was excellent, Neil. Thanks very much. And it's guy inspiring and a and a couple of different levels here, and uh, and uh, how Gaelic agat kuchoch. Ah, Gaelic beg agam. Me and I, I've been baking Gaelic agam. Thank you very much, um, Neil. Um, so we're going to hear we brack the spoken word now, and uh, we've got our resident song stress Iona. Um, on the next, and she's going to give us a, a wee song. That was amazing. Like, I can't, uh, like, it, it just shows that, like, Scots is such, like, a, a living, breathing language that you can learn online. Um, there's also, um, every Twalwick, there's a speak, like, a speech meeting that is held by Bill Patterson at Lansdowne, Library. I, 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 I'm uh, Bill Patterson for for this for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I, I'm, yes. I am. Um, I uh, go. I get to his uh, meetings on Zoom. They're great. I have not been to one in ages and ages, but it's like folk for out of the world learning Scots, and it's really really cool. So if one of you went, it's for Abdi. It's for like native speakers. It's for like folk that want to learn or folk that want to speak to people um it's every second monday i'm not sure if in the next scene is neil you you probably can hmm? this this month okay um this month coming i'm going to sing a song i'm going to sing a wee song um <clears throat> this is a violet jacob one and it was written 1925, published in 1925. And then the folk singer, Jim Reed, put it to melody. And um, yeah, Violet Jacob is commemorated in Queen's Park in Glasgow in the form of a bin. So if you ever visit Queen's Park in Glasgow, there's something called the Scottish Poetry Memorial um, Garden. And there's loads of amazing poets. I think Marion Angus is also there, um, but they all have their own bins. So one day I hope to have a bin of my own in Huntley. <laughs> uh, 
Um, right. <clears throat> Oh, tell me that was on your road, dear Oren Orlan, when as he come blind, fair the laugh that's never fe my mind. My feet the travel England, my time day for the north. My man is other cellar tides, run up the firth of old. I hear when I can, I'm more than you, and finally fat and rise. And fain I'd feel the creep and mist on yonder shore the heart lies. But tell me as you pass them by, but sigh on the way. My man, I rock the roving gulls that sail a beam day. But sigh nothing, Leon, when a four you come to fight. For there's muckle lion yon that that's mere to me nor life. My man a sweat the youngest wrath, see hen I trod for years. Oh, when forgive a hameless loon that canna see for tears. And far upon the youngest wraths, I saw the wild geese flee. A lang, lang stream o' beaten wings with their heads towards the sea. And neither crying voices to reel to hint them on the air. Oh, when he mercy had your wished for a darn Alison mayor. The Northern Wind by Violet Jacob. Thanks, Iona. I have pleasure to, to hear you. And uh, I look forward to seeing that bin in Huntley. And maybe I can aspire to a bin at the fit of the top and off. Maybe if I didn't have I would get a bin for. But uh, um, that's a new life objective for myself. <laughs> okay. Um, Biden up in the, the northeast, um, we could to move across a wee bit east for Aberdeen. Uh, Faye Aberdeen, Faye Huntley to, to yourself, Peter. Aye, well, I'd say I'm, I'm, as you say, a bit further east, Faye Huntley. I'm near the Brock and Peter Heed. And uh, although it's Doric, it's my spec, I thought I would give uh, 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 the first poem that I would do is, is a poem of Burns, although I'm a great uh, fan of. Doric poetry. I'm also a great fan of Burns poetry as well, and I've spoken at dozens of Burns suppers over the years, and I'm a, I'm a great respect for the man. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do the poem that I like the best of, of Burns, our Burns' work. It's an absolute gem, in my opinion, and it's a, it's it's to a mouse, and it shows the great love and respect that Burn had, Burns had for our nature's creatures. Critter, but it also tells you an awful lot about the, the state of Burns' mental health at that time, especially when you listen to the last verse and you realise that he actually thinks that the moosey that he's just turned into its nest is actually better in a better state than he is. And, and that, to me, tells you a lot about the, the state of Burns' uh, mental health at, at that time. So here we go, to a mouse. It's now written in Doric as the Archean, but it's written in Scots, so uh, it's, uh, it's very relevant. We slake it, goring, timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breastie. Thou needn't start a war so hasty we bicker and brattle. I would be lathed to run and chase thee we murder and battle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion that makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-bound companion and fellow mortal. 
I doot na whiles but thou may see. But then, poor beastie, thou may live. A demon nigger and a thrives a smart request. I'll get a blessing with the lave and never missed. Thy wee bit hoosie to and ruin. It silly was the winds are strewing and nothing new to big a new in of foggy green. And bleak December winds and suing, both snail and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and wast, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy there beneath the blast, thou thought to dwell. Till crash, the cruel could have passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap of leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now thou stunt out for a thy trouble. But who's her hall with all the winter sleety dribble in Cranrich Gall? But Moosey, thou art no the lane in proven foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of mice and men gang aft a glai and lay us nocht but grief and pain for promised joy. Still, thou art blessed compared to me. The present only toucheth thee, but och, I backward cast my eye on prospects drear, and forward, though I canna see, I guess and fear. Now, to me, that's just a marvellous bit of poetry. Now, if we'll just carry on, we'll just carry on in the uh, the uh, uh, the in and my Dorak poem is another fav uh, favourite of mine. And it's a, it's a poem written by Flora Gary. Now, Flora Gary was born in 1900 in New Deer, and she lived to be 100 year old and obviously died in 2000. Wrote some great stuff. Uh, but to me, probably the, our most famous poem is, is Benagok. And uh, Benagok is a real place. It's a, it's a, bit, a bleak bit of countryside in Buchan um, between uh, New Deer and Methlach. And this is a story, the poem about uh, somebody that's kind of trapped. They feel trapped in this wee craft, and the and the whole thing's getting them down. But it's it's four generations in the same family, and she feels that she can't leave. So Benagok, Flora Gary. It was just a scalp of the muckle first, a sclight of a rock gran. When grandfather's father broke it in for the header and the fun. Grandfather split at barn and byre, brought water to the close, but fell dykes being the bare brave face in a cart road till the moor. But her father sewed her to the yard and scape it among bees and keep it fancy jokes and doos at Warna Muckleys. He bought all wizened horse and guy and scrimped muck and seed, saying, Clochran with a crackly host, he dwined a war. Indeed. Mithers growing all in Dean, dialed in small book of tea, but still, she's master of her work. My work it masters me. Ach, I'm tired of plaitering out then among hens and swine and kai, kernin among brookie pots and yarn and crews and fai. I look far over by Ithenside, the five is life like lands, the after less. And Ben a he and the mess blue grampians say to the hollow Ben a go and scan after the fairum. Gan I bet dart, gan I bet dart, I'd flat the common term. It's all the thole in the first spring day when the black earth lies in clothes and the chuckets walk into the plough and the snow bree runs in the roads. Oh, it's all the thole and the quiet hair's glow. And the left's a blaze of fire. I stand and glower, the pale in my horn, when the road out to the bayer. But it's worst of all but Whitsunday, when the nights are quiet and clear, and the flower and currents by the yard, and the green corns of the breer, and the bird that gives this hull its name, young bird you never see, sits down in the wood with the water side, and laughs. Laughing at me. Flat, flat, you feel, says the uncle bear. There's finer couthier folk, and kindlier country, hain a wa, with the hollow been a gook. 
but my mother's going all in D. And like Sally and Fire said, it went bracker here. To leave the hall, it's brack and mine, the bait. That's it. What? That's a brilliant team. That kind of really uh, summed up for the time that it would have been like to, to firm the, that kind of, kind of grunt. Maybe I think it, it was the, the car break. Was a, a very tough life. It was a hell of a tough life. Uh, and it shows in that, and that's a that's a great thing. I've got a one. I've got a left me short then just to finish off with. Oh, my I. Mother I had, my, my, my mother had grief and was bitten on beef, and the doctor says, "Nay, if so, but you'll stop it and fries and puddings and pies and going on to die the nuts." Well, she thought she would try it. This monkey not diet, but the remedies failed the disease, and now she's fair prison. Because her wake's been in risen. But boy, she can eat half clam trees. That's me. That's good. That's brilliant, Peter. Thanks very much for, for that. That's brilliant. Um, and I'll have to, I'll maybe drop you a note about, um, is it Flora? Somebody that wrote the. the Flora Gary. Oh, I'll need Flora, to. Flora. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check out some of her stuff. I think uh, it was just grand. And of course, it was a pleasure to hear uh, Robbie Burns and all. Um, okay, so a wee change again for, um, for speaking and singing, and we've got uh, Andrew Maitland, who's uh, the treasurer at, at Our Vice, and um, I just asked him to, to jump on and uh, just say a wee bit um, about, about Our Vice and some of the, the campaigning, because we're, we're having to up our, our fundraising just a, a wee bit um, to we've got some bigger plans to do stuff uh, next year. So, on through, or are you on? I am here. There you go. Let me just put you on to speaker view. Brilliant. Cheers. <clears throat> uh, all right, Abdi. Uh, it's good to hear from everything today. Uh, so, just to your mind, uh, advice, the point of fit we're doing at the moment is we're wanting to increase the provision and funding for Scots and put forward the presence of Scots lead in Scotland's culture and public life by gaining the lead official status via Scots Lead Act, providing for the footing of statutory Scots Lead Board, contributing to public policy and political processes to make sure that Scots is ten ten to our future lead policies, gain Scots position at Ilkedale, work and live in an educational lead, at the head of Scots society, by uh, equal status to the English, Gaelic, and British side leads, gain Scots position, position as an official national leader of Scotland, faith in law and fact. And obviously, we've done a fair wheen of things uh, recently, uh, trying to obviously have the Scots pledge itself, uh, raising awareness of that in the Scots Parliament. I knew we've got a fair wheen of progress going on with that making steps with getting uh, some of the legislation today with that into the parliament and the process begun with that. So a couple of the steps that we've had to do to raise a bit of awareness of the lead involved uh, campaigning during the Scots parliament election, uh, including using a use of technology to make contact with all the folk uh, who were standing for election back then. Uh, also the use of the web state itself. Uh, so as you can imagine, there's a fair we know cost involved with that. So obviously it'd be much appreciated if you could give even a wee bit of money just to help with all the campaigning work that we're doing at the new. Um, so after our first speaking, which is going to be soon, I'll tell you, I'm going to drop a wee link into the chat. So, uh, and actually I'll put it on the Facebook page and all so that Abdi can, if they feel generous enough, just denote a wee bit of money to their cause and hopefully give us how we had in trying to progress what we've been doing so far. Uh, and again, thanks for all coming to Nick. It's, it's really appreciated. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Give me the fear of that. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and yeah, thanks again for coming, Abdi. That's what Iona thought about that. 
It wasn't a good, but it wasn't that bad, I hope. Now, are you digging us a song, new Andrew, after all that? I'll pass on to my talented folk. I <laughs> good, good. That's brilliant. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Okay, so back to our um, main running order. Um, so we're all back north again, and uh, we've got your shell, Lorraine. Um, up in Bonnie Orkney. Now I have been there, so I can a buckle times and ah, so uh, I can I can say that it, it is a lovely place because I've I've seen it myself. So good, good. Okay, then I have three PD poems here for you. But this is all ones I wrote last month, so they're all fairly recent. So the first one is called "Last to Leave the Party." The party all summer bedding plants are sobering up and getting ready for home after a stone mad three months sexless orgy of colour. They're pitting on their winter coats and heading for the door when, ta da, here come the Nareens with their germaline pink fingers, getting at some jazz. No innocent blush for this lasses with her in your face Barbie smiles. Double bubble bursting out of the muddy hour work autumn palette. Leggy flamingos for South Africa. Hot pink on a cold grey day. Crayola green strap like lifts against an iridium silver sky. Always out of place, always our dressed, and always last to leave the party. Now this next thing is called To Swim Among the Stars. And this kind of, is the kind of weather we've been having this last pretty while. Fleets of whamsy sky ships with heavy indigo keels roll across the surface of the dreech ocean above. Dripping icy water into me drunden eyes. Me druckled hair like tang cows plastered to me mirren head. Me nab and knees pushing into the oncoming briny gouster. I hear notion that the muckle sky sea could far down in a swelky and wash me out into the galaxy to swim among the stars. And this last one is just a pretty bit of nonsense. And this one's called It's the soon die mark when the back quarters of my tongue sore with eating too much sugar. It's the same soon that I mark to ties a pony in a boot to trade a freck for a sugar lump. Does the pony come in a boat because he canes that <coughs> means sugar or is <coughs> the soon of pony's kisses? And that's me. That's Thank lovely. You. Thank you, Lorraine. That was lovely. It was a pleasure to, to hear your wee poems. And we like a wee bit of nonsense and all. So it was a good thing to, to finish off on there. Okay, um, Sophie Orkney doing to Galloway. I think that's right. Susie, are you bad doing here, do you? And I made that up. There. No, you've not made that up. I do bide in Galloway. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I thought I'd read my books, if that's all right. Well, not, not them both. They might be just do the one and maybe a poem. We'll see. So this is Nip Nebs, and we've had a lot of frost. Um, well, we've had a lot of wind, but we have had some frost. Now, when I was wee, I was very inspired by um, by the frost and ice as a child, and then the the beauty of the landscape. So when I was looking up words for frost and ice in Scots, um, I found loads of words that I never really heard before. 
And they were like jewels in my mouth. So I thought I'd weave them into a story and it became Nip Nips. I'm gonna show you all the pictures, but I'll read it to you. It by in the shadows of the pale moonlit, the rakes about a canty wee sprit. We is called called breath, and he's poke for skinkles. He garbs all things and a lick some prinkle. Now maybe as you've seen him, diddle dabbling out in the crumbshy snow. Crumbshy, crumbshy, crumbshy. Or sprinkling icy drops on the speedy webs. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And maybe as you've seen him hanging shockles off the spigot. Chitter, chitter. Can I see he's chittering? <laughs> and painting the windies with a glisk of forests and ferns. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Can you do that? Can you swoosh, everybody? I can see you. <laughs> That's bro. Or skating foo pelt over the puddles. Wee! Mind if you've seen them, you best wear warm clays or nip nebs will come and he'll prinkle your tays. He'll mark your teeth chitter and he'll turn your cheeks red and he'll tug at your lugs and he'll nip at your neb. So come a while in and get nice and cosy and sit by the fire and I'll tell you a story. And the pictures are by Ruthie Redden, who is just the most enchanting illustrator I've ever met. <laughs> so, and that's the second book, but I'll not read it because it might be just a wee bit too long. It's Nip Nebs in the Last Berry. And it's all about sharing. So I'll read you a poem on my end and then I will leave you to it. Um, do you want something funny or... Uh, Something deep and poignant. Oh, I don't care. Who do you feel, Susie? <laughs> I feel funny. I feel like ah, I'm going to keep that. it childlike and playful. I fear it. So, Ode to Igor. There's an awfully big speeder living in my shed with nine muckle in and echt bursy legs. Twa snashy fans, fangs for chowing up fleas and eight bursy pooks on his eight bursy knees. Being kind of feared, I tried not to show it, but the grass was getting lang and I needed to mow it. So I chapped on the shed door and I cried out, Hello, I'm coming in, Igor, for I'm needing the mower. Igor shouted back, I need bother him. Denny, you fear me? I'm just hanging on my way, wrapping up my tea. So now I didn't flash myself about Igor in my shed with his two snashy fangs and his eight bursy legs. I'm no fear to beasties, so I gave them a wee name. I gave them a voice to talk with tea. It's a fabby wee game. All beasties like to hear a ricked good blether, the mostly sitting gab about gardening and the weather. Eager and me are friends, and I always will be. He just minds his own business, catching fleas for his tea. Of beastie friends our, in my garden and the shed, where bides Mary the Slater, eager the speeder, and an earwig, I call Fred. And if you really liked all that playful storytelling, log in to Our Wee Podcast. It's free and you'll find it on all music and podcast platforms. It's an audible bubble of bliss away for the kick storms of adult life. So I enjoy it. <laughs> and I can say it's well, well worth the lesson of Thank you. Uh, but you can keep your forky tails on the second name. Um, I'm kind of warm to spiders, I have to say, over the years, but uh, the forky tails. Uh, uh, my uh, fella does not like them. <laughs> <Eat wings>. oh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Susie. Okay, back up to the northeast, uh, Rory. Um, 
far about are you and I? I actually don't abide in uh, Aberdeenshire anymore, actually. Uh, oh. I abide in Northumberland, I do. God, um, God traversal I, again. I, I, <laughs> you're probably closer <laughs> to me there and you would be up there. It's, 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 it's near Farty, Edinburgh. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so next, there, there's two things I'm going to do. Um, so first off, I thought I'd uh, tell these apocly jokes. Um, so carry, carrying on with the, the, the humour of the next. Um, and then going to have a wee bit of time uh, I might do a Christmas carol, uh, seen as the morn's uh, first of December, but I'll see see how much time we have at the end. But before I actually start telling you a joke, uh, kind of jokes, I thought it might be worth explaining for why I think that some jokes could be a good why promoting Scots um, and getting mere folk to spick it. Um, I mean, fit I'm doing the next, it's just to point you, it's, in, it's inspired by a forum on Facebook uh, called the Doric Humour Forum. Um, it's half a guita. I hated your shoot, your shoot out to have you on air because just to be ill today, somebody's putting on a joke that they've screeved it in, in Scots and put on air. Um, watch you, there was a lot of, lot of cure scenes on air, um, but the I'm going to do in it, or the, the puckle I'm going to do are, are in a tea course, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry. But the jokes I'm interested in, in telling you is that are ones that are based on a play on words or, or double entendres. Um, and I think a, a, a greed joke kings a long way. Can folk, folk will tell greed jokes for years. The things I'm going to tell you next, I think are probably my own, but they're probably not. Somebody's probably told it before, and I've probably just picked it up. And, but the thing is, is Scott, you know, jokes that are in Scots, can they only work in Scots? Say folk hate to tell it in Scots. See, in my opinion, in terms of trying to further it, we hate, hate things that, that we you know, kind of just, just for ourselves, for Scots speakers and Kind of are funny and folk want to do that. And I hope it might help folk just step out of their comfort zone and speak Scots for time to times. Um, yeah, and I think it's just worth again. I, I, I thank you to Andrew Maitland for just pointing on, you know, pointing out, you know, foot or deem with your advice because it's, you know, it's a, it's a greed cause, you know, and I'll, 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 after this, I'll be going on and, you know, hope somebody else will help them out, you know, because say, say not abide in Northumberland, I mean, far abide here. Folk are braider than I would say in most parts of Scotland. I mean, obviously Northumberland folk use money. The words that we use in Scots is again we're we're both we're both cut for the same for the same class. <laughs> um, but yeah, and finally getting back up to Aberdeen, uh, about two weeks sign to, to watch a football. Um, I didn't hear hardly any Doric. It was um, any only why and and you that. So I tell the jokes, Phil. Um, I'm. Is all right if you, if you give a hand. So what I'm going to do is a, a couple of a well, in English we'd call a knock knock joke, but I'll, I'll call it a chap chap uh, joke. So you can I give chap chap? Can you say fuzzier? Aye, aye, um, do that. Aye. Uh, <laughs> right. So so chap chap. Fuzzier. I'm a booty. I'm a booty fa. Can you repeat the fuzzier? Going back Benny Houston sit down. I, I didn't promise they'd be good ones, but <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> so, so another thing, it's in, you hate a cane the geography of Aberdeen for this to make any sense, but um, it seems a bit like kind of uh, uh, fit wide the chicken cross the road jokes. So, so fit wide did the wee chicky cross the lang sracht? Uh, if I would say I didn't cane, and the reason is for he try you is my trick. Well, but um, so. I'll do another chap 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 so oh, chap chap. Fuzzier. Fuzzier. Chap chap. Well, it's, 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 it's when you say fuzzier, and then somebody say ah, affa, affa. Thank you, see you. Yeah, it's, it's another dafteen, but, <laughs> but it, it, and, and you and you can this sort of dafteens for bearings, but I'll, I'll do it's a, it's mm -hmm. a wee bit of curious, but there's no it's no there's no Need too much. There's need too much of swearing in it, so we'll be alright. It's all right. Safe um, turning off now. So I can. I, 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 Watershed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so dear Devil Don, again he's a, a year he thought it'd be a good idea to loop our fever cars in a souped-up Massey Ferguson tractor at a New Year show, and the stunt didn't again wheel, uh, didn't again as he thought, and the next week he was roused for a coma. By a doctor at Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. And he says to him, No, Dan, you're a lucky chill to say the least. You hinna deed, and you hear your arms and legs. Unfortunately, though, 
to your new half thief, and you've teen sickadunt till your nether region, but gone to hate to amputate in your bars to relieve the swelling and mark sicker that there's no risk of losing anything else. But the safest option is for them both to be teen off. And we've rused your fair coma to spear your fit bars your favourite in and gin you to want to try save it, or if we should just gang with the safest option. And Dan was struggling with a ring in his lugs, and he couldn't mark out us and the doctor had said to him. Fit was that last time you speared me, to fit the doctor said. Fit bar is your favourite in, and fit bar can be teen off. And Dan says to him, Dundee United's my favourite fit bar team. Doctor says to the nurse, right, we'll, we'll give him the safest option and put him back in her. But anyway, that's uh, it's not a good team. But, uh, no, it's very funny. So, it's so funny the, the, we've, had, uh, <laughs> we've been speaking about bars um, on, on our yeah. rights. Maybe we <laughs> ran to our bars on you. Yeah. <laughs> so these, these new scenes are, are definitely not mine. Um, so, so fit as a chuchter dig and he finds a trumpet growing in his garden. Rooted out. Uh, fits the difference between an elk and a moose. Elks don't like cheese. But, um, and then the, the last scene to finish off with, uh, it's, it's, a, it's another chap chap in. So, so can you can help me with this scene, Phil? So it's a chap chap. Pause here. Pause here. Chap chap. Pause here. Pause here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do re mi. Oh, God. So, so do. <laughs> oh, my God. You're on fire and act, Rory. <laughs> well, I, I was, I was, I was doing that, and I was doing that as a warm up because I, I'm gonna, gonna hear a wee minute. I'll, I'll do uh, just to finish off, I'll do a wee bit of a, a Christmas carol. Um, yeah, I go for that, sorry. Saw Helen, eh? Hey, Helen, as a sleep in select, just a faithful and heavenly pair. Here, lady, we curly hair, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, hey, night. Quid sun lachs, o fu brecht. Love pour in ut fe his heli mu. Telling us our salvation is new. Jesus, Lord, we your birth. Jesus, Lord, we your birth. I'll need to do the rest of them because it, it gangs on for a long time, but um, that's it for the next. But uh, yeah, thanks, Abdi. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, thanks very much, Rory. And I think you're, you're right there about uh, humour and art. It's a, it's a great why uh, that's sort of uh, getting, well, any, any language in, into your head, isn't it? It's um, yeah, definitely on to sign there. But aye, and about a Christmas air and art, hopefully my daughter didn't hear that because she's been up to 90 a day because it's the 1st of December in the morning. So the advent calendars are out and Ben Hoops uh, ready, ready for the morn. But um, I'm Hudden Bark putting the tree up yet. So, um, but I uh, thank you very much. Right. Um, what have we got next? So, Sheila, um, we've got your, your bonny sale next. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> um, thanks, Phil. So, um, so I'm, I'm in Glasgow, Glasgow, but um, I was brought up in, in Dice, so Aberdeenshire. And so my Scots is. I think largely Doric, or at least when I write it is. Um, this first poem comes from uh, my, my granda used to love to tell stories when we were bairns, and he maintained all his stories were true, and, and there was a truth in his stories. 
So one of the favourites was his tale of um, when he went to Canada in, 20, in 1912, um, maybe about this time of year, October, November, and uh, he used to tell us this story of how he'd seen the very iceberg that sank the Titanic. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, well, I'll leave it to you to decide if he could possibly have known which iceberg actually sank the Titanic. It is true he went to Canada and it is true he was a giner. Um, I'll leave the rest to you. The iceberg that sunk the Titanic. Fin Granda crossed over the icy Atlantic at the Hinner End of 1912 on his way to Winnipeg to mark Mayor Siller in a split new life. He was but a puckly months a hint the Titanic. We never wearied a hearing him tell the tale that he saw the iceberg that funert the one grand fan liner. He kent it at ins, kent this was the very same lump of ice that finished the unsinkable. There was nae mistaken the muckle boar riven out o' its in timmers, the exact set of that mighty liner's buch. He was a giner. See, he kent about a that. And the why it bringed out the water, har harped, glistering gillet green, the merry dancers there and a. Fit was to nae say, we trued Elka word. Um, <clears throat> and my next poem is, uh, it's also a memory for childhood. Um, when I was about four, we bade by the side of the railway line, right beside the line and a wee tied cottage because my, my father worked on the West Highland line. So we, we bade in this wee hoosie right in Rannoch Moor, about um, a mile south of Karour, Karour Junction. Um, and it was a very, very severe winter that year. And so this poem is kind of based on a, a, a memory, um, a real winter poem. A bonny fechter. That winter, sna flew its feathers thick, smurchen the hail ranach moor. I thought the world would be fight forever. Danny the keeper said the stags would have to come doon, else they'd starve to death. We'd never seen red deer afore. But these beasts were not only shade of red. Every day, as the licht hid ahint the black mouth, they floated o'er the high fence at the side of the line, sepia angels big in a brig o'er cloudy drifts against a grape slate sky. I thought their hooves could never touch the grun until the day we heard a scraping outside the kitchen door. He was big. His antlers telt a long story, a hero's story. Territory defended and hinds protected. He eased back a bit, but didn't flee. At my mother's nod, I threw the tatty parents scudding into the curned up khaki snar and waited and watched while he took his time as fine big heed lowered nay loss of dignity and so he let me feed him every day as the licht left the sky nay to touch or stroke but he'd let me look into his een and watch him. 
until the day he didn't come. The day I look at and shouted and poke it about the frosty dike. Nay use, my pale, a slippy, tarty appearance, frozen in the nicht for I'd left it. I splashed boiling water to soften him for him, but nay sign. Winter gnawed on until Danny the Keeper said, our a nip and a fag. Don's a grand old beast, deed, doon by the burn. Funny that, how they hide a wa from the cane, it's their time. Like an all war hero, like only bonny fechter, from the cane's his time is up. A bonny story after and I'll, I'll finish this poem was actually today in the heads quite an old poem of mine but it was in the herald as poem of the day because of vincent andrew's day um, it, um i think it's been in before but anyway i thought i'd read it because it is saint andrew's day my land plays melt and slow airs in the fiddle gars me greet struts like nobody else. The kilt was invented for strutting and struts darkly with white gloves and orange sashes. His locks lying about Ayrshire like small cups of water held in ribbed brun corduroy hills and licked sillard o'er the firth of Clyde. Ice skimmings in summertime, wrinkled like a saucer a new jam, pushed with a finger to test for setting. Leaves sick a sweetness on my tongue, dusk pink clover, suck it dry each summer. And mine's the sharp smell of black and neepy lantern, chip it awa so patiently my feather sitting by the tilly lamp. Draws skeins a geese to wild grey lochs, arrowing o'er northern winter skies. His a squint smile, nay brimming with confidence, though teams with heroes, sung and unsung, can never say I love you but hugs me, awkward and fierce, gives me a boozy. Thank you. Well, thank you. That was, it was lovely. And that time um, I seen um, Susie wrote in the chat there that the uh, Bonnie Fechter fair got a wrecked in the hair. And me and I have to say we with that, you know, I can just, just imagine and what an amazing place to have been in and up here, guy, guy bleak in the winter, but uh, yeah. uh, the, the stag can do. And when you were speaking about, uh, you mentioned Tilly Lump there, and I heard that for a long time. My mother used to use uh, Tilly Lumps to keep the frost off the plants in the greenhouse. Um, so, <laughs> so it's funny, okay, when you're listening to, to, to these poems and stories and that, again, quite often you find your mind going off in, in different places when you hear um, words that you, you might not have heard, but in a spit muckle about uh, Tilly Lumps in Edinburgh. Uh, funnily enough, but, uh, they're becoming part of history. My poems, I think. <laughs> uh, well, well, no, to, lovely, lovely to, to hear. So, thank you very much. Um, as, thank as a, you. Okay, so we're drawing close to, to the end, um, but um, um, still got two great, great um, performers yet, though. Um, so, first up, um, we've got Joyce um, up. So we're heading back up to Shetland again. Um, so I'll pass over to yourself, Joyce. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to say, Sheila, I'm a bit newer to poetry than you, but I just love that performance. And but I've loved everybody's tonight. So it would be nice to be a part of this celebration for St Andrew's Day. Um, I was born in Glasgow. Uh, both my parents were just region, but both sides, the ancestry was Irish. And I've written a couple of poems for tonight. 
Um, so this is the first time I've, I've read them out loud. So we'll see how they go. Um, but they're both really about reminiscing. And you were just saying there about Tilly Lamps and it takes you back. And I hope these both uh, take you back a little bit. Um, if you're closer to my age, perhaps they'll mean more. So the first one is called um, All Over Again. The Waverley began its journey from its birth, sat proud at the Broomalaw. The engines were switched on and the steam began to rush powerfully out of her funnels. The packed paddle steamer was such a familiar sight to the Glaswegians who lived along the banks of the Clyde. Aboard the ferry, crowds of families chatted excitedly, cans of iron brew, pints of lager, ready salted crisps and nuts were bought and it was off. The song of the Clyde was being sung by an elderly man with an old accordion that seemed to be a part of him. The River Clyde, the wonderful Clyde, the name of it thrills me and fills me with pride, and I'm satisfied wherever betide. The sweetest of songs is the song of the Clyde. Folk sang along in out-of-tune voices, and all too soon they were passing under the Erskine Bridge, then past Dumbarton, Greenock, Gurok, Dunoon, Weems Bay, then over to Rossi for the perfect Glasgow Fair. Days on the beach, buckets and spades, pokey hats and shoes full of sand, pints in the pub and more crisps for the wains. Fish and chips followed by midges. Red faces after sun cream, into bed and restless nights, dreaming of tomorrow and paddling in the cold Clyde. Going to the shows, theatre at the pavilion, playing in the swing park and jumping off that harbour wall. Rounds of putting, crazy golf, hard red rock, with words going round and round in the centre. Days going too fast and back on that Waverley. One more trip up the Clyde to inner city homes, jobs and schools. Memories to take with you. Photographs to look at. Songs in heads that sing around and around. Life moving onwards. Days, weeks and months till it's time to do it all over again. Thank you. <laughs> so the second poem, I've lived on Shetland for about 17 years now. Uh, we've brought our three children up on Shetland, so quite a different culture from, from my background. And this one's kind of inspired more by something that happened here in Lerwick one day. And it's called Twa Old Chinas. They walk together up the street, familiar sight to pair of them. Their steps seem to go in perfect motion. They swayed from side to side at the same time. They look at more than brothers, more than just old friends. Twa men well into their 70s, or maybe their 80s. Twa men who felt pain in their joints. They were often treated by their doctor for gout. Twa old Chinas, who had seen too much pain in their lifetimes 
Too many of their friends died in the trenches at the battlegrounds in France and further afield. Had lived with hungry bellies and a pain of TB. Had watched their own parents die of diseases caused with living with too many folk in one house with just one clergy. Twa old Chinas. Walking up the road to the pub, a half and a half to take the blues away, and then another and another. They would blather for hours without saying much at any truth, but each other's company they treasured, for they had shared a lifetime of laughs and memories. They loved the bones of one another. So, Every day, everyone in the tune saw two old Chinas walking up the street, a familiar sight and wanty treasure. For no too soon a war, two old men would soon be gone and just a memory to treasure. Thank you very much, Joyce. That was four lovely poems. Uh, did you anything we am um, the folk at uh, Shetland Forwards? Uh, yeah, uh, I used to be involved with them quite a lot, quite a while ago, but I've actually got back in touch with them uh -huh. because I've, um, I've written a book for Bairns. I, I mainly do visual art okay. and I've written uh -huh. a book and they're helping me with the dialect um, in the book, um, which is really exciting. So, uh -huh. yeah. Hi, they're, they're a good bunch. I was just in a look there just now. So they've got the, the God, I'll try and pronounce it, Yul Gidder and um, their sort yeah. of Christmas event on the 7th of yeah. December. So I'll just say the folk of, um, you can have been inspired by the, well, the, the Scots in general, but obviously the, the Shetland element, if you want to hear a lot more uh, Shetland uh, dialect as uh, Scots, then uh, jump over to their Facebook page and uh, you'll find out. Yeah, I'm actually reading, reading that at that night. It's oh, next brilliant. Week. I, yeah. I, 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 I dialed in last year and, and, and watched. Um, I was, was brilliant. I loved it. So great. Uh, great. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and And... Um, and last but um, not least, we're jumping down to uh, New Elgin, um, to your shell, Louis. You've got a wee bit for us on that. I like the troops, but like, uh, uh, before, yeah. I, uh, before I start, uh, I just want to draw attention to the village people look that I'm sporting at the moment, or village folk. It's uh, for charity, it's my, it's my fashion choice. Oh, I, uh, I thought you were maybe going to, you were going street tonight. Um, you were going to be a, a rap in Doric or something. I was no, sure. no, just, 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 just <laughs> trying to raise some funds with a handlebar cash. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here we go. <clears throat> uh, this sounds called It Is What It Is. The bagpipes will skittle and the Kayleys will burrow. Our tartan hearts still beat strong, even if you think we voted wrong or right. The Hail Nation is just as uptight with fought the fight clean and fair. You might be feeling numb. And underneath a Tory thumb ripped from a European womb, untimely and undeserved. But it is, it is what it was. What will be, will be. But for somewhere so we, the events of this past we wily have shown that this wee nation can be something more than we are. More than the sum of our parts and that future may not be that far away. No tartan tinted glasses can blind us to a future that binds us. But for now, it's three, and we are glum. You might be feeling like the nation's bum or Johnson, but we nae sign a coming. And I, we came. All the fresh trade in the world won't make any fucking difference. And yes, we can still rise now. And no, we're near there yet. But this is my brave heart, and some folk were fair. But we have to try and try and nay accept these eaten stains, self interested lies. Aye, it's shite. But we have not lost our bite or our right to fight, like the Beastie Boys said. So I want to repeat that this feat is something we should wear with pride. We ain't no reason to hide. 
We are a nation. We always was. We might be battered and bruised and I, we kind of kick a bar that well and a few battles we fell, but at Wembley, we did not concede. So let's just keep the heat. But we have something more than that. Something that they cannot bottle or dispel and take their fill. We've got the will and the power. We are what we are. And that'll get us far. Past the bar that they set for us. It is what it was. It is what it was. Thank you very much. Hey. Thank you very much, Louis. That's was great as ever. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll bring us to, to the end of the event. Unless I'll give one last shout out. Does anybody have a burning desire to jump in and do a lasting for Wakata Nacht? Well, there's always time for another in. Are you well? Well, if you want to do another in, Mark, I'd say uh, you're more than welcome. Have I a wee bit of whiskey left? So, uh... <laughs> well, hold on and see if I can funny for you. Now, I've got a few on here. See, so hold on, give me a minute. Now, if you give me a minute, you, you, you just fill it in for a bit until I find this in here. I've got a few. Oh, I, 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 I've got a, I've got a Scottish joke. Go on. Go for it. Why, it's my favourite, Yin. Why did the baker have brown fingers? He was needing a jobby. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I found that funny because for now, up in the northeast, a, a jobby is just a job. And then you come down to, to the central belt, and I said to somebody, Oh, has I a jobby? And then I just like looked at me and they were like, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> it's like, there's always something to do. <laughs> but I'll fun it. All right, Mark. I, I'll. And it, this is either I wrote myself, and it's awfully short, so you're glad that, you know, and, 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 and I haven't got Glenn Livett here either, so I'm going to be here a bit of yours later. Now, it, it, it's called, it was not meant to be my friend. And Peter quite likes this scene as well. It's, it's real short. It was not meant to be my friend. He must have thought it far or seen. Far too many th things left undine. He has other plans for me, you see. No point in thinking fit could have been and underneath my feet is from Bamshirstein. Hey, man, hearth I lean aside a sea close Oxford still. I'll buy the file if it is his will and seek a rocker path to climb and fit it, fin out fit he his and mine. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. You've done... Abdi's just done amazing tonight, and I'll, I'm just going to raise my glass to, to all the performers tonight. Um, I've only stuck to a, I've stuck to a whiskey, and I've been quite well behaved. But it's just been a pleasure to to listen to ya tonight, and um, yeah, I'm sort of in awe of uh, all your talent. And maybe next time I'll have to learn so Maybe I I can learn my body ballad. Um, or sign for the next team, but uh, or Peter, Peter would be in a better position to teach you a bothy ballad than me. I, I saw a here, I, I, yeah. Well, maybe next time I, um, mum's cousin used to be a bothy ballad champion, um, but it didn't come to us side of the, the family. I have, I have been keen to sing a bothy ballad from time to time, but in the next good we don't know, and we'll we'll keep that for, for next year. How, how aye, would that be? Aye, I'll be a bothy ballad next year. We're well, living at the tail end of the, the winter. Um, so <laughs> I and just for Abdi watching, um, hopefully this has inspired a lot more folk to to talk pair to this kind of thing and speak mere Scots. I mean, you don't even have to be a native speaker as, as Neil is, is showing a, um showing us an act and that. And um and if you're a bit um a bit shy, well we'll we'll be gentle for you. Um I promise. Um so um and if you want to join us in our vice, um just Live poor and here. Look at our website at uh, ourvice.scot. Um, all the details is on there. Um, you can just be in the mailing list, or you can um, be a bit more involved if, if you want. And um, we've certainly got a lot of work to to do ahead of us. There's a lot of positive stuff going on just now. The Scots Languages Act. Um, and uh, Jack and Don, uh, for the committee, they've 
been along to meet um, some of the civil servants involved in writing the 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 bill and, and stuff. It's early days there, and there's probably a lot to, to do, but there's certainly a lot of positive soon. So it's it's definitely a, a positive time for, for Scots, I would, would say. So on that note, I'll raise my glass stab to you there, and uh, I'll let you have one here, whiskey yourselves or a cup of tea, and um, and we'll see you again soon, and a happy St Andrew's Day to you. Okay, good night. Cheerio. Well done, Phil. <laughs> okay. Cheerio. Bye-bye.